Isn't it nice to talk about the Intercontinental Championship like it means something? I mean, there was a period of time when the IC belt was considered to be the workhorse belt, a belt that one would hold before moving out of the midcard and into the main event. Guys like Bret Hart, Edge, Shawn Michaels, The Rock, Triple H, Steve Austin. But you might look at those guys and think to yourself, huh, aren't all those names from like 20 years ago? And you're right, because for the last 20 or so years, the belt has just been a prop for mid-card guys to hold on for a bit before someone else from the mid-card holds on to it for a bit and so on and so forth. It's easy to forget that WWE actually retired the Intercontinental Championship for a bit in the early 2000s because, well, they didn't care about it. Shinsuke Nakamura held on to the thing for nearly a year and only appeared on pay-per-view once on the Survivor Series pre-show, and that was more of a contractual obligation than a storyline reason. Guys like The Miz, Kofi Kingston, Dolph Ziggler, Big E all eventually won world titles after being the IC champ, but you wouldn't say that the IC belt propelled them into the main event, and even if you think that it did, the sure as didn't stay there. But Gunther has made that title feel special and important, a title that someone would want to win. And he has made it feel like it's a belt that could catapult its next holder into the main event because Gunther himself feels like a main event attraction now. Let's be honest, he feels more like the main champ on Raw than Seth Rollins does. And because he feels like such a big deal and the title feels like such a big deal, it feels like whoever beats him will also be elevated. But who will be the man to take the belt off of Gunther or Gunter, whatever we're calling him these days. I'm Luke from Wrestle Talk, and here are 10 WWE stars who could dethrone Gunther slash Gunter. Honorable mentions Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. A lot of Gunther's early work in WWE was against his Brit Rest brethren in Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. And, well, look, those matches would be fantastic. And I'm sick of seeing Tyler Bate waste away his 20s in NXT. And I'm sick of calling Pete Dunne butch. Just. Do some of them. Anyway, number one, Chad Gable. After an eternity of fans and his own peers calling for Master Gable to finally get his flowers via a singles push, we finally got our wish, and what do you know? Shocker, he knocked it out the park. While Gunther is a genuine match made in heaven for anyone on the roster, his pairing with Gable has been something really, truly special. The Austrian is the M. Bison of WWE, making plucky all-American underdogs like Gable the perfect pairing. It's been a breath of fresh air seeing Gable in a serious role and showing his literally unmatched wrestling ability. But as much as I would happily watch these two square off each and every week until the end of time, this one must come to an end soon. And after the ring general crossed the line and made Gable's kids cry, this one needs a happy end something I feel WWE has forgotten how to do these days. Thanks, Roman. Also, with the fabled Intercontinental title record now able to win and first ever singles goal that he so truly deserves. I mean, he could win a title later down the line, but it will never mean as much as it does right now. No, I'm ready. The crowd are ready. Gable's kids are ready. Book it, Trips. Number two, Jay Uso. While Gable would be our first choice, there is another man who has plenty of accolades to his name in WWE, yet none of them as a singles guy. That, of course, being main event Jay Uso. Mm, big buck your hair is for main events there. Moving Jay to Raw and away from the Bloodline saga was a stroke of genius from WWE, as it's totally freshened him up and opened him for other storylines while poor Jimmy is stuck over on SmackDown in the Bloodline spinning wheels. And while Jay could go for Seth and the World Heavyweight Championship, the face versus face dynamic isn't ideal. It also feels like his world title aspiration should be focused on Roman, but a mid-card title makes way more sense to begin with, and putting it on such a featured player would ensure that it remains a relevant part of the red brand. There's also a ton of opportunities for people who have previously been scorned by Jay and the Bloodline to step up and challenge him for the gold, namely Drew McIntyre or Kevin Owens, two guys who both haven't quite let water run under the bridge just yet. And speaking of one of those two men, number three, Drew McIntyre. One can't help but feel that in another timeline, Drew McIntyre would have been the ideal guy to end Gunther's IC title reign. Hypothetically, had Gunther already surpassed the IC title record by the time Drew returned to face him at SummerSlam, 100% I could have seen the title changing hands. However, now that Gable has entered the scene, Drew has slipped into the background once again. We're a year on from Clash of the Castle, where everyone and their cat thought that he would be the guy to dethrone Roman, yet that now seems like a distant memory, and he hasn't felt like he'll win a title for a while now. But again, like with Gable, the record's broken, and he can run back the SummerSlam match and give Drew another run with that belt. Just shh, don't tell Sheamus we said any of this. Number four, Johnny Gargano. Honestly, at this point, I take any story for Johnny Gargano. Bring back the f***ing 24-7 belt. I don't care. Just put the f*** 
Joker back on TV. Yes, as unlikely as it seems, again, it takes a little bit of effort from WWE's creative minds. And do you know what? You have perhaps the perfect challenger for Gunther in Johnny Gargano. As was testament throughout his babyface run of the black and gold brand, there are very few better in the underdog role than Johnny Wrestling. Yet ever since his return to WWE nearly a year ago, things just haven't hit the way they did on NXT. Maybe it's because his only substantial main roster program thus far has been one, and it was one that he wasn't really in, that being the way too long feud between Dexter Loomis and the f***ing Miz. One would think that Triple H, the man who orchestrated Gargano's peak NXT run, would understand how to get the most out of him. So, you know, maybe there is hope, but, but for the love of God, do it before Vince gets back. Oh wait, he's back? Well, have fun being fed to Omos, Johnny. At least you'll always have Bluey. Number 5. Sami Zayn Another unlikely entry due to the fact that Sami Zayn just can't stop feuding with factions. Seriously, if the months of facing the bloodline weren't overdone enough, now we've seen the exact same thing with the Judgment Day. While Zayn is heavily featured on WWE TV, unlike our previous entry, he's cooled off a fair bit from his feverish popularity earlier this year, so let's just switch things up a little bit and have Sami set his sights on dethroning Gunther, a man he's already proven to have excellent chemistry with. While we have already advocated for some great underdog contenders, I'm undoubtedly Undoubtedly contradicting myself here, Sami Zayn is among the best underdogs of all time. He is the underdog from the underground and all that. Similar to Elimination Chamber in Montreal in February, Zayn must once again be thrown into the lion's den against the big bad final boss, but unlike Roman, actually have Zayn beat said boss. Have him overcome the numbers game of Imperium. Heck, have Owens and Jey Uso run interference to even the odds, but give us that cathartic release and give Zayn that major single gold. Number 6. Ilya Dragunov Like being sick to the back teeth of seeing Tyler Bate toil away pointlessly in NXT, the same can be said for Ilya Dragunov. Who on earth would have Bate and Dragunov under contract and think, gee, yeah, wrestle matches with these trainees of under 100 people, lads. That's a really good use of your time. Tyler Bate has been under WWE contract since he was 19. He's now f***ing 26. What a colossal waste. Oh, wait, this entry is about Ilya Dragunov, isn't it? <clears throat> anyway, I mentioned some of Gunther's early great successes in WWE were in NXT UK against Bate and Dunn, but his standout pandemic feud was against Dragunov, with the pair having a bona fide five-star classic in front of exactly zero fans. Just the sounds of the chops echoing around the empty room, which I can still hear ringing in my ears. So do you know what? Do it again! J just do it again! For all the opponents that Gunther has swatted away, the mad Russian could simply have his number, doing what he did in NXT and putting an end to a record-shattering title reign. We need a trilogy. No feud should remain at one apiece. Number 7. Tommaso Ciampa On this past week's Raw, Tommaso Ciampa entered the IC title picture after coming to the aid of Alpha Academy's outnumbered beating courtesy of Imperium. What resulted was an electric trios match between the six men. It was a lot of fun, sure. But you know what would be more funner? Hmm. Is seeing Champa inserted into a meaningful program, and I for one don't want him to get off this ride anytime soon. While Gable may be many's choice to dethrone Gunther, what's the harm in having Champa have a go first? He's got some solid babyface momentum right now, so it feels like it's the right time to have the very least have him come close to taking the strap off Gunther. Whether he remains a face in the pursuit of the brand's new Goldie is another matter entirely. With Champa known to be sadistic when there's a championship involved, this could lead to Champa running through Gable to get his own shot at the ice title, returning to the Blackheart character upon dethroning Gunther. This could pave the way for a ready-made first feud as champion against the Olympian in the future. Number 8. Bobby Lashley Alright, just, you know, word of warning, the next three entries kind of defy the integrity of the brand split if that even existed in the first place, so don't get hot in the comments. Ellie not in the Miz of Eden. First up to the plate from the blue brand is the almighty Bobby Lashley, a man who has yet to stand across the ring from the ring general, despite it being a meat-slapping fan's wet dream. Because Lashley's new Hurt Business 2.0 stable needs some solid gold, they should break some brand split rules to get it. While that would solidify the faction as a force to be reckoned with on both Mondays and Fridays, they would likely need to turn things up a notch in order to solidify that they are indeed heels, because, I, I mean, they are heels, right? Maybe? 
So how about Lashley wins the IC title at the expense of a popular babyface like Chad Gable, flaunting his new swag, influence an expensive suitor Adam Pearce in order to be inserted into the title picture via a three-way. Lashley can pin Gable, keeping Gunther strong, and allowed to get some nuclear heat for the new faction. Voila! Number 9, LA Knight. If this all sounds a bit too complicated, then let me talk to you. Yes, because a much more straightforward option from SmackDown is the megastar LA Knight. I mean, this man has already been welcomed on Raw for reasons to feud with The Miz, so just why not do it again? Have Gunther lay out a celebratory IC title open challenge for breaking Honky Tonk Man's streak and have Knight answer and Bob's your father's brother. While Knight realistically should have been the one to put an end to Austin Theory's painful US title run, the IC title would serve more or less the same purpose. Only beating Gunther would obviously mean a hell of a lot more than beating Austin Theory, who sucks. Give Knight a much larger rocket fired up his backside. The fans and seemingly now WWE are ready to see the former Eli Drake get a big push. And as great as it is being the 2023 Slim Jim Battle Royal winner, there's no greater physical evidence of an increased stock than holding the Intercontinental Championship and dethroning Gunther. Number 10, Sheamus. And finally, the one with the most sentimental value attached. Despite falling short at both Clash of the Castle and WrestleMania, there's always been something telling us that perhaps things aren't over between the European lads. Maybe it's Seamus has always been incessantly trolling Gunther on social media every day since Mania, leaving comments in his post like some kind of deranged ex-lover. While the Austrian hasn't risen to respond to any of Seamus' attempts to get under his skin, surely it has to lead somewhere, right? When I interviewed Sheamus back in 2020, you know, before the world ended, he told me that the one title he wanted to win was the IC belt. It was not the world title. It was not the universal title. It was the IC title. It's the only title in WWE he's never won. And Gunther's reign was catapulted by Sheamus in the first place, becoming the first notable banger of many in his reign and raising that bar for all to come. A bar that has been so closely met but not surpassed even a year later. And again, the record's broken now, and that was always WWE's main objective and reason why Sheamus didn't get his happy ending at Mania. Now it's time for some vindication. Forget Cody. This is the real story that needs to be finished in WWE. And that was our list. Pretty good, right? Let me know who you'd like to see dethrone Gunther in the comments down below and subscribe to this channel and check out all of the other videos that we make. I've been Luke Owen. Jam that jam. Hello kids, Captain Hindsight here. The only superhero to arrive after all the damage has already been caused to point out. Yeah, actually, that's, that's pretty obvious. That was, that was all going to happen. You probably should have listened to all those alarm bells. But in the moment when you're just so happy the person who left you high and dry seven years ago returns to your arms and says, I ain't going anywhere.